The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 to 6, where Moses was inspired to write. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. Then he took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. My dear friends in Christ, after God spoke to Abraham and told him that he'd have a son, he, he said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, so shall your offspring be. You know, when God said that to Abraham, it really seemed as if Abraham's family line was going to end right there, that it would be done because they just weren't having the promised son that God had told them about. But actually, in the coming years, what happened is Abraham did end up having eight sons all together. And, well, through them, he became the father of many nations, the Israelites, the Ishmaelites, the Midianites, the Edomites, for example, and, and some other nations as well. But when we think of those nations, we're thinking, of course, of the, the physical descendants of Abraham. And, well, God did make it that the physical descendants of Abraham, they were like, as he says there, the stars in the sky. And really, when you think about it, we couldn't possibly figure out how many people have lived on this earth who are physical descendants of Abraham. But when we think about his descendants as being as numerous as the stars in the sky, I think we're more inclined to think about those spiritual descendants of Abraham. The Apostle Paul did say, You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Our Lord, what he does is he makes us believers like Abraham. When God the Holy Spirit works through the word, through the gospel, perhaps through, if we were as infants called to faith, and through baptism, when God the Holy Spirit works like that, what he's doing is he's, working to increase the number of Abraham's spiritual descendants so that that number keeps on growing, oh, like the stars in the sky, like the sand on the seashore. But the thing that we can always recognize is that, yeah, that number, it is a great number, but there's always more room for even more in the mansions of heaven. So let's not hesitate to talk about our Savior to the people that we know and love and, and maybe even or maybe also especially to those people that maybe we don't love, the ones who aren't very lovable for us, who are hard for us to love, so that the Holy Spirit can work on their hearts too and change them and keep on adding to the number of Abraham's spiritual descendants. Our reading, it says, Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. The Hebrew word that's used there for believe, it means 
cause to be certain. Abraham, he believed the Lord because the Lord himself caused Abraham to be certain that God was going to keep his promise. Not only the promise that he would have a son, but also the promise that one day the Savior would come as one of his descendants. And now because the Lord caused Abraham to believe this, therefore what the Lord did is that the Lord credited that faith, that God-given faith to him as righteousness. The Lord gave to Abraham Christ's righteousness which is his holy, his perfect, his sinless life, so that on the last day Abraham would be able to stand before God, holy and blameless and ready for heaven. And that's because instead of really having his sinless, sinful life, that was washed away by the blood of Christ, it was replaced by Christ's righteousness. See, Abraham was, would be standing before God with Christ's righteousness, with his sinless life. And that's why he could stand before the judgment throne of God. And, well, when we were called to faith, well, what the Lord did is he also caused us to believe in the Lord's promises. And that was credited to us as righteousness as well, so that we get the benefits of Christ's righteousness. See, he gives us Christ's righteousness and the benefits of, of his death on the cross so that we too will be able to stand before the Lord on the last day ready, worthy because of Christ. Not because of ourselves, but worthy because of Christ for eternal life in heaven because our Lord makes us believers like Abram. Oh, do you think that it's possible to get something for nothing in this life? In some respects, we say, no, that's not possible, but yet at the same time, we recognize that people must think that that's possible. That's why, for example, the lottery is so big. People think that they can win something when really that's not the way it's ultimately designed. Some can win, but most people lose most people lose but even the person who wins big in the lottery that means that that person is probably going to lose his former personal life and gain all kinds of problems as well all those free offers that maybe we get in the mail or through email or other sources or through our phones all of those free offers they usually have some kind of a catch with them that ends up costing, and sometimes they end up not just costing, but even wrecking people's lives. But today's reading how, is telling us how we can get, well, everything, when you get right down to it, the eternal joys of heaven for absolutely nothing. For absolutely nothing. And now, that's why Abraham believed, because God caused him to be certain that in the promises of God, he had the promised Savior, he had the blessings of God, he had eternal life. That God was so gracious and merciful to him, that's what God worked on his heart. And he's gracious and merciful to us as well. He protects us. He rewards us because of his grace. He sent us his son. He makes us believers and he gives us Christ's righteousness. Our Lord, he makes us believers like Abram. So trust in his promise to never leave or forsake you and to take you safely through this life into the mansions of heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, help us like Abram to trust that you are our shield, that you have and will protect us so that nothing can really hurt or harm us. 
That your son suffered and died for us and rose from the dead is your proof that we don't have to be afraid. Help us always to rejoice in the fact that you don't treat us as we deserve for our sins. But you, our Lord, reward us and give us Jesus. And you give us heaven. Build us, build up and strengthen our faith in Jesus so we trust in you like Abram. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.